So Arduino and Qualcomm just had a baby and it's having an identity crisis. Is it a microcontroller? Is it a single board computer? Welcome to the Arduino Uno Q. The world used to be so simple. If someone asked me what's the difference between Arduino Uno and Raspberry Pi, I'd tell them there are two completely different things. The Arduino Uno uses a microcontroller without an operating system. This means your code runs directly on the hardware. It's a very robust and predictable system. No drama, no excuses, no system updates. Arduino Uno is like an ant. Simple brain, one job does it perfectly every time, no multitasking, no distractions, just pure dedication to moving that breadcrumb from A to B. Tell it to blink an LED, it'll blink that LED through nuclear winter. Raspberry Pi, on the other hand, is a single board computer. It's like your desktop PC, but slower, smaller and cheaper, with additional GPIOs where you can connect electronics. It runs an operating system, preferably Linux, Raspberry Pi is like a dolphin. Brilliant brain can juggle multiple tasks while doing backflips. But while the ant marches underground without interruption, the dolphin has to surface constantly. Your sensor reading is happening 20 meters down, but whoops, the Linux scheduler needs air. Network interrupt, surface break. File system access coming up for oxygen. That precise timing you need the dolphin was busy being mammal. Genius level IQ? Absolutely. Real-time reliable? Nope. So Arduino introduces the Uno Q and suddenly our ant and our dolphin are roommates sharing the same PCB. The ant is in the basement reliably blinking LEDs and reading sensors. Meanwhile, upstairs, the dolphins running Docker containers, hosting web servers, probably mining cryptocurrency, they communicate through what I only imagine is the world's most awkward interspecies messaging system called the Arduino Bridge. Your little microcontroller can now phone a friend running Linux whenever it needs help using remote procedure calls. After using microchip, formerly Atmel, 80 mega chips on UNOS up to R3 and Renesas RA4M1 on R4, they are now using an STM32U585 in the queue. After decades of 5 volt loyalty, Arduino just went 3.3 volts with the queue. Sure, the pins are 5 volt tolerant, the STM won't explode if you plug in your old shield. But let's be real, that's a breaking change. But there is also good news. Every pin is capable of syncing and sourcing up to 20 milliamps compared to the R4's 8 milliamps. We get two megabytes of flash memory compared to 256 kilobytes. The microcontroller now runs up to 160 megahertz compared to 48 megahertz on the R4. And I didn't even compare it to R3, so our ant went to the gym. This isn't your regular worker ant anymore. This is an ant that carries eight times the breadcrumbs at triple the speed. It's still an ant, still doing ant things, but now it's the Dwayne The Rock Johnson of ants. The dolphin upstairs must be so confused. Overall, I really like the STM. It looks like a great chip, but it runs on 3.3 volts, so I wouldn't call this product Uno if it doesn't output 5 volts on the GPIOs. But maybe that's just me. The STM microcontroller can be programmed using the Arduino Uno IDE like normal Uno boards. So nothing really changes. Except everything changes if you use a tool called the Arduino App Lab. Now you get access to the raw power of the new processor on the board called the QRB2210. This chip is the single board computer part of this board. It's a quad core ARM Cortex A53 running at 2 GHz. It has a built in GPU, two image signal processors, and runs Debian Linux OS like Raspberry Pi, but a different flavor, of course. A ton of I.O. is exposed on the headers. You get GPIOs, audio in, audio out, camera interfaces, and video output support via USB-C. Yes, you can connect a powered USB-C hub and connect it to a mouse, keyboard, and display. And look at that beautiful keyboard. Q has also Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on board. It's like they designed it by asking, what if we just said yes to every feature request from the last decade? 
Needless to say, I already ordered this board. It should arrive around Halloween. I'm looking forward to play around with it and giving you a full review. So here's my challenge to you. Drop one project idea in the comments that would be impossible on a regular Arduino, but totally doable on this Frankenstein's monster. But please don't tell me that it can recognize tennis balls. Also drop your biggest questions below. I will try to answer them in my review. Now that Qualcomm bought Arduino, the biggest and most important question to me is, will this acquisition benefit us Arduino users? If it works out, we can get our hands on really advanced tools that are easy to work with and open source at the same time. Is this how it will play out? Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, hype, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.